back to easy to spell where the name is easy to spell and we did it wrong anyway i'm your dungeon master andrew i'm being joined by a much smaller group of people tonight uh, a dark magical plague is sweeping through all corners of the easy to spell group <laughs> we are those that have not yet befallen it so joining me the healthiest among us mike i'm mike and i play talon <laughs> I'm Rachel, and I play uh, Olive. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and my name's David. I play a turtle named Guy. Let's do it. <laughs> and uh, we are on the heels of a daring prison break where a bunch of uh, likely incredibly dangerous pris prisoners were set free by uh, this group in search of someone in particular. Uh, an individual who I believe we've only been told is the name uh, Theodore, Teddy, known by the other inmates. Um, from the warden, you discovered that he had been transported from, uh, oh God, it's a Canaan's, Canaan's Citadel, a high security Nalbur Indian military prison. Why am I using such long fucking words? It makes it so hard to talk. <laughs> uh, a high security prison in the upper reaches of the Nalburand Empire. Um, he's been trans uh, transferred from this prison to the capital city of Valenstead, uh, to which some of you are more familiar with than others. Upon taking out the warden as well as a number of guards, uh, the two of you are joined by uh, Ritalia, a, con a contact in the military, uh, a clerk who works for Nalbrand, who got you in via the old mines and showed you where to dig and is kind of helped you on your way, as well as two uh, near identical tortles uh, who were prisoners, who when you released them, they decided to tag in and help out and are accompanying you. Unfortunately, on your way out of the out of the prison through the same mine shaft, like mines that you came in, you feel a, a rumbling, some alarm being set in the prison behind you. It shakes the mountain itself to its very core. And there's a collapse separating you from two members of your party. You spend a few minutes kind of digging at the stones before Tez is like, all right, I think that you guys are just gonna have to go. We'll, there's another passage here that I think makes its way around. We'll catch up. That's, uh, where should we meet you guys? Uh, Ritalia, just meet us at the, the checkpoint that we talked about, if anything went wrong. Of course, that's a, His. oh. Go ahead, that's a, Ritalia's oh. just agreeing. Oh, I was like, uh, his name's Taz, dude. Taz. No. Not yeah, 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 it's Tazma. I don't know where you got Ritalia from. And you just hear from the other side. Ritalia. It's my name. Understood. We'll meet you there. Stay safe. I just want to make sure you know, like, my name's Tez. Yeah, my bad, right. Tez. I got you. All right, cool. Uh, we'll meet you on the other side. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Safe travels. Later, dude. And you hear footsteps kind of scrambling through the stone and rubble on the other side as you continue to make your way out, out of the mine. There is, especially with this covering your escape, covering from behind you, you travel for maybe an hour or two underground, the same, same path that you traveled to get here, for coming out into the brisk spring evening air. It is not evening, it is late at night. You guys hosted this at around midnight. It's been several hours. So it is three or four in the morning now. What are you doing? You said it's pretty brisk and cold. Yeah, it's chilly. It's probably, I mean, it's hard because we, like in real life, we're all like snowed in under, you know, feet right. of snow. Um, but it's maybe in like the mid forties, low, low fifties. Uh, I'll just look to Olive and, Hey, do you need your, do you need another jacket or anything? You good? I'm fine. Just, you keep yourself warm as well. Well, I guess, uh, start heading to the checkpoint. 
it's odd that that uh, tavern they spoke of is, I believe, very close to our checkpoint. Yeah, that's... Uh, how often uh, do you partake, guy? Yeah, dude, I got some green in my bag, right? That's not my bag, dude. The fuck? I'm gonna start just pulling out random, like, garbage and shit. This isn't my bag. You you grabbed the wrong bag after everything we just went through. I got my drums. I mean, this bag will work. It's just all my shit's gone. And that's whatever. I got my drums, dude. What the fuck is this? It looks like a used piece of toilet paper. All right. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, that used to be a sandwich, maybe? I don't know. I don't like you, a rock. Did you grab a trash bag? You, uh, well, it, it, uh, I mean, it doesn't feel like that. I dump it all on all the floor. <laughs> okay. Um, 85. It is. What is the max capacity on... 500 pounds 500 pounds what is 85 percent of 500 a lot uh we'll say uh 425 425 so 425 pounds of just loose trash are just jettisoned from this oh oh shit (laughs) and it's it's not instantaneous it is just like pouring out of this extra-dimensional space uh, like walking around up in front of you like there's a little bit of a like kid holding onto a fire hose element where the bag is like shoved against you like so, kind of pushing you back is gar- just garbage and trash is jettisoning the smell that washes over you all is horrendous it's uh, the amount of time it has probably taken for this prison to fill up their uh, garbage bag of holding is significant oh. Oh. Oh, I don't know if that was the best thing to do. Uh, oh just, my god! Just, just stop. Let's let's just close it up. Let's keep going. Well, hold on. There, there might be some useful stuff in here that I could use. You're gonna it's take all trash. Through. One man's trash is another man's treasure, dude. Okay, let's, here. let's look through here and uh, do I see anything that might be interesting? Well, give me a, give me a perception check or investigation, whichever one you prove. Jesus. All right. Sure. Sure. No problem. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be the same. Yeah. So five. Five. Uh, perception check from with disadvantage from Vala and Raven as well. Uh, do, 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 10. 10? 17. I just 17. Okay. <laughs> this, because mm-hmm. I rolled a percentage dice to see what turned up, so I've got to pull up the Dungeon Master's Guide. All right. The rules on magical treasure. Random magic items. 425 pounds of stuff because I rolled to determine which table I'm rolling off of I rolled pretty high here we go okay uh, David roll a d8 for me or Vala sorry you're the one that sees this roll a d8 for me Seven. Seven. Uh, most of it is just garbage, but you catch this glint, kind of a, a black, shiny something, and gently moving aside like some half-eaten food. Um, it is a small onyx figurine of a dog. You can add a figurine of wondrous power, the onyx dog, to your inventory. Um, yeah, 
It's just a little magical trinket that's uh, oh. well, well and it, I'm it, going through it, the trash. It, it, uh, whether you give that to, to Guy or not is up to you. You're the one that spotted it with a five. He doesn't see you take it. Do I do I know what it is or what it does? Loosely, these are kind of rare. You know there are, like, there is just a, a magical energy to it. Um, you'd have to identify it to get the specifics, but you know that there is a way to activate them to actually, uh, it will turn into a dog and back into the figurine. Oh, cute. Um, yeah. The additional details, you'd have to actually... Identify it. Identify it or figure out a way to identify it. Spend some night to it. If, if you oh. s spend like a short rest attuning, like figuring it out, um, you can just add it to your inventory and you'll know what it does. I'll, uh, I'll go, I, this, this might be of interest to you. Oh shit, look, slow dog, dude. That's kind of cool. You'd be careful with it. It is a magical item. Um, I think that it... Uh, no shit. I'd have to take some time to figure it out, but you might be able to get it to actually turn into a real dog. Yeah, yeah, you're just messing with me, aren't you? No way you'd give me this. We just met. It is in your bag. Well, shit, if that's true, I, you're pretty cool. There is one other item that, David, you do find this. Um, it's a headband. Um it's like bright orange, like hunter's orange. Uh, and it is it is magic, but you have no idea what, what it is. Oh, shit, dude. I wonder if it gives me a skateboard. Wrap around my head. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, I'll let you know that it is cursed. Um, yeah. You cannot take it off now. <laughs> that orange headband. That's all right. It's fine. Starting to look right, like dude. a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle every moment. <laughs> That's all. So uh, going through the trash, he is going to pick up of anything of weight or potential bludgeoning, piercing ability, and just kind of throw it back in the bag regardless of stink. Okay. Yeah, that's a decent bit of stuff. A uh, couple waste buckets, maybe, you know, whatever. Yeah, a couple chamber pots, some waste buckets. Um, Broken pencils. Yeah, broken, Homemade uh, shivs. broken pencils. Some rocks that you're not sure if came out of it were just on the ground where you dumped it. Um, Fuck, look, another rock. Yeah, just pile on anything with heft back to it. Some old fruit, like you know how oranges will <laughs> like turn into rocks when they're left alone long enough? Yeah, that uh, work right there. <sighs> Well, normally I would say we need to clean this up. I don't like leaving trash in the nature, in the woods and stuff, but we need to get going. Uh, all right, dude. Hey, look, piece of pizza. I'm going to um, mold earth and create a pit and try and like shovel as much of it into the pit as I can. That's uh, taking, taking some time to do it. You guys can at least get everything that dumped out into the, the pit. Um, because we all know how landfills minimize the impact of trash on the environment. <laughs> uh, if it's buried and we don't see it, it's not a problem, dude. If we look back the direction towards the prison, is there a glow in the sky yet? Um, From a fire that's supposed to have been started? Yes. Okay. That's. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, wait, why would there be? Right. That's you sent off the two gentlemen uh yeah that's the you can see in the distance you are at the base of what it was a large pass you can see the city of older expansion in the distance probably another few hours away from here um but up in the mountains where canaan citadel lies a deep red glow kind of is pulsing against the mountains you can't see the actual prison from where you're at um these these mountains tower over you. These are the Dragon Spine Mountains. Um, they split off the the wild north from the civilized countries. The barbarian tribes are as you go 
a day or two's journey north and make it into the snowy tundra. Uh, not too far from you. The roving tribes that make their home on the northern side of this, the natural protections that being the only thing that stopped them from being fully incorporated into the emperor empire of Nalbrand. Uh, these tremendous mountains housing dangers that anyone who grew up in Nalbrand were warned might lie in the mountains. Olive, you specifically have many tales of heroes and warriors who went into the mountains seeking ancient lost treasures, stories of fighting dragons and manticores and all tales of beasts, tales that you know are true because one of those adventurers brought home many trophies, which you would have grown up around. Guy, I've got no idea <laughs> how familiar you would be with this. Um, and Talon, probably not so much coming from farther south. And in the, sh in the shadows cast by the growing fire in the distant mountains, you do see something shift. You don't know what. It's too far. Even your elf eyes won't make it out. Are we in mountain or forest terrain by any chance? Uh, you are in the, the forest that kind of surrounds the base of the mountains. Okay. Can I go ahead and use my primeval awareness? And see if there are any dragons present. Within uh, six miles. What is within six miles? Yeah. yeah. In the rough direction of the great shape shifting beyond the smoke and flames. Make a history check, all three of you. Nine. Nine? Okay. Three. Oh, I guess I didn't have to roll for my primeval. Uh, so history would be, I'll just use that, would be a 14. 14? With a 14, you know, you've heard stories of the great worms that live in the Dragon Spine Mountains. Rindeth, the Lord of the Black. Suvrain, the Redeemer. Uh, Bedrot, the Death Lord. Jersonen, the Grumpy. Just numerous, with the 14, I can't give you too many, but just name after name of story that you've grown up with. There's a reason they're called the Dragon Spine Mountains. Okay. Uh, yeah, we need to we need to go. There are many, many big monsters in this area. We need to start moving, make as much headwind as we can. Stay quiet and keep our heads down. Yeah, all right, dude. About what time is it right now, would you say? Uh, it's probably 3 o'clock in the morning or so. All right. And I guess we'll head towards Lakeside. Let's move okay. at least until daylight. We'll be protected under the sun. Lakeside is a ways away. You're looking at two or three days, like moving right before you make it there um give me a survival check all of us or just one of us or uh just... probably just talon okay uh survival that would be a 19. 19. uh from where you came out of the mines you saw signs of footsteps breaking off in different directions um like almost definitely from the prisoners you had set free before a number of them going towards Oldrich's bastion the city that you can see from the base of the mountain that you're not going towards now um there were three sets of foot uh three pairs heading from uh the prison in the same direction you're going towards lakeside with a 19 you recognize uh one is the heavy booted footsteps of a guard 
the one that left after having been rolled next to a very specific cell. Um, going the same direction as you. Continue on. The, the cries of people calling for fire, just that echoing, surreal sound that you get when somebody yells in the mountains, how it kind of echoes, ever-present, fade after a little a few minutes of walking. Are you pushing all the way through the night, or are you looking to make camp? Uh, I would say we're pushing through till daytime. Okay. Uh, at 19, you make your way all the way to the river that you know you can follow uh, until you to the lake at which lakeside is near. Um, and it's as the sun kind of begins to crest, you are at least free and clear for now. No pursuit, uh, no sign of Tez and Ritalia catching up to you in the night, but you know where they'll meet you, assuming nothing happens. All right, well, we've been up most of the night. Do we want to get a few hours of rest? And I'm exhausted. Yeah, dude. It's, yeah, it's bedtime, man. All right. I'll take the first watch. Thank you. Okay, you guys settle in, kind of setting up camp, and there's a, a small grove of trees that you're able to kind of camouflage your camp in. Um, first watch. Second. I. Watch. So I was gonna say I uh, put up as a ritual uh, Lehman's tiny hut. Okay. Perfect. Um, and so I'm gonna. For... Good. Sorry, I, I, I'm going to cast um, Enhance Ability on uh, Raven to give Bear's Endurance so he can stay up. Perfect. You gain 2d6 oh. temporary hit points. Nice. Um, and cool. advantage on constitution ticks. And with that, I won't even require a roll for you to stay up. That's uh, the magic keeping you awake, at least for long enough to finish out your watch. Uh, each of your watches goes by um, without event or require perception checks. Is there anything you guys wanted to talk about before you go into the first full day of travel you have? Thank you for this hut. It uh, was unexpected. I'm glad we have somewhere to sleep. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's just a, a, a dome, really. Nothing can get into, but, uh, you know, it's me and Tez have stayed in it a few times. It's it's, it's nice to have for sure. Yeah, how how do you and Tez meet? So, uh, so Tez and I we've been we've been traveling together for a little while. Uh, it, we met. Shoot, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe a year ago, maybe less. I I don't know, somewhere around there. And uh, he. I needed some money. He needed some help. We were just chilling. And uh, so, yeah, we uh, we decided to, to travel together and, you know, make some money together. And part of the reason why we were in the jail cell, we did a we did a deal with the dude. We got him his shit. And he was like, nah, fuck you guys. You stole this. We're like, the fuck, dude? So, yeah, I don't know. Some weird shit. Well, you seem much closer than having known each other for only a year, so that must Yeah, you know, you. Uh, some people have said that before, too. There's no way we're brothers, man. Like, we're, like, people are like, oh, dude, you two are brothers, and we're like, nah, dude, there's no way we're brothers, man. Like, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. He looks completely different than I do, man. Like, I don't know. Can I do an insight check on this whole story? Yeah, yeah. Give, me, give me an insight check. That is a 11. Okay, David, don't tell us if you rolled persuasion or deception. Uh, what did you roll? Um, so uh, I was, uh, 
Just give us the number. Oh, okay. Uh, 13. 13? Yeah, I mean, it all makes sense. It's probably a little surprising that they're not brothers. But, but I mean, you could just be being racist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he, at the very least, he believes what he is saying. Gotcha. He's not lying to you. That's some fortunate luck, man. It's hard to find people that are worth staying next to. Bald's gonna yeah. look over at, uh, or, well, uh, Olive's gonna look over at Talon with that look. So, uh, <laughs> you two, uh, I'm hanging out as well? Like, you just, how long have y'all been together? Oh, I mean, it's been about a year as well, right? Yeah, we came, we visited the, the new land over across the ocean and oh, happened to no be on the same shit. boat. And, yeah. Crazy stuff over there, man. That's pretty sick. Do I recognize Volatile? Did you grow up in Albrand? No. Um, but I have been traveling through here for about a year. Yeah, give me... Uh, let's go perception with advantage. Actually, I've probably been here longer than that. Anyway. Perception with advantage. A 10 and a 9. Uh, so what, 11? 11? Yeah. Uh, maybe you saw... I mean, you saw probably like two months ago you were doing a job, we'll say, in... Uh, in Oldrick's Bastion, you've probably been there for a while with Tez uh, doing work. Um, she looks a lot like the princess, and you saw the princess talk like recently. She gave a big speech. She was rallying the people. Uh, Falling into my accident again, I see. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm talking to you. Uh, this is your this is your conscience, man. Like, oh man, I That's totally saw heart. her. No, I'm pretty sure. I've seen yeah. You no, she. Uh, no. You know, you you look like close enough uh, that she could be sisters do you like are you like i, I don't want to like come off here you look pretty familiar to me like are you like some like i don't know like well is your sister like wanted or something dude sorry i want to make sure i got this through explicitly clear Te uh, guy you and tez saw the crown princess uh Valala valkyrie Speaking in Oldrick's Bastion in person to the people. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> uh, are are you like a wanted person or something, or not a wanted person? Are you like related to like the queen or princess or whatever the hell she is? Um, I get that a lot. We do look very similar. Yeah, but no relation. Gotcha. Okay. No worries, dude. Um, I'm not even gonna inside check that. Oh, yeah, just take your face worry. value. <laughs> yeah, I didn't lie. Hey, well, <laughs> let's uh play the semantics here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, shall we? Yeah, all right, man. Let me just. Pick up my drums here and my bag, and that's uh, that's yeah, that's everything. Okay, moving from the grove, uh, there are two options for you to travel here. You can stay like right along the river, um, or there is a, a well-traveled road. Excuse me, am I hiccuping? Between uh, Lakeside and Oldrick's Bastion, that is uh, probably just a couple hundred yards away from the river. Um, it'll be easier going if you follow the road, but you'll be more likely to run into travelers, whether they be like merchants and caravanners or like guards and nobles. Um, along the river will take longer, but you'll be less likely to be like seen. I'd suggest personally that we take the river. How's that sound, guy? 
Yeah, dude, I like water. Perfect. Um, and then for the purposes of anything you have for your from your ranger kit, uh, it is forest along the river. It's just thin forest. Um, so let's get a survival check for today. With that would be 22. 22. There is one point during the day that you kind of, you catch something up ahead, like snapping sounds along the riverbank. With the 22 survival, you're able to slow the group down and kind of you scouting ahead look, and there is uh, a huge crab, like a giant hole, like 10 feet across seven feet tall at the kind of apex of its shell. Uh, it has a rock-like carapace and it is currently like stuffing pieces of something into its mouth and you catch glimpses of like torn rag clothing and a foot. Um, clothing that matches what a uh, guy is actually wearing currently. The prisoner's outfits, like the prisoner uniforms, one of the individuals, but you're able to skirt around and can avoid the the nesting ground for this crab. Travel the rest of the day without incident. We should we should leave a warning before we go past. Draw a crab or something, or danger into one of these trees, so that Ritalia and them following behind us can see it. Okay. Guess we'll. So we like carve a little danger symbol. Okay, what uh, what symbol do you carve? What's the, what's the message you're leaving behind? We're carving into a tree, so I think just like triangle with an exclamation point. Okay. Skull and crossbones. Okay. Uh, so the rest of the day goes fine with that incident until you make camp. So during the first watch, who would be taking first watch? I'll probably take first watch every night. Just I don't need as much sleep. So okay. I'll do second. And then I also put up the dome every night. Okay. Um, do you have a, a fire or anything that you're using? Um, probably a small fire. Try to keep it as minimal as possible just to keep us a little warm and have a little light. Have, so, But the fire would be in the hut, right? The, so the hut is just a dome. Oh, it doesn't have like a... We couldn't put like a hole in it for air or anything? It's just a magical dome. So um, it is a 10-foot radius, a mobile dome force and remain stationary until the spell ends okay so we'll say you would be able to have the fire in there just because it would fill the dome up with smoke yeah um let's see this boom during the first watch so during uh tal and your watch basically a wall of force around us is what it is You hear uh, just a little ways away from your your camp, um, a couple branches like snap. Um, it doesn't sound like anything like trying to hide. It's just like footsteps in the thin underbrush. Um, but it calls you. It pulls your attention over. Um, um, if I hear that, I'll kick dirt on the fire and put it out, and immediately pull my oh. bow. To actually put a point out to that, um, I can command the interior to be dimly lit or dark. The dome is opaque from the outside of any color that I choose, but is transparent from the inside. Okay. Then, so, on that, I guess, would you still have the fire just for, like, warmth and for whoever's on watch? 
It is also only like 10 feet across, so having a couple people sleeping inside the... I'm going to say the fire still can't go inside the dome. It's still kind of the same issues. Yeah, no smoke can get out, but yeah. Yeah, I would say it's still... Well, uh, as soon as you, like, kick the fire out and pull your bow, uh, you hear just from the brush, Oh, it's... It's all right. Um, hello? I, uh... Didn't mean to alarm you. I just, I saw the smoke in the distance and thought safety in numbers. I'd rather, I was just hoping I might set up camp nearby. I'm going to call out from the darkness because he can't see me. Mm -hmm. He cannot see you anyway. He just hurt, like (laughs) saw the light go out. Yeah. Is that loud enough to wake the rest of us up? Yeah, that's a, he's calling out like. Where are you coming from? Just from the road, you're not too far off it. Um, I thought I'd just gotten lucky. I saw the smoke mm-hmm. traveling alone. I got robbed a few miles up the road. And so if you've got food to spare, I wouldn't be opposed to playing a song for a meal. And has he come out into the open yet? Or is he still coming? He has not moved. You, like, okay. <laughs> You can probably make out kind of a dim shape with his hands up in the air. <laughs> okay. uh, I was going to come out and say, just let him come close to the fire. Is that forward? Right. You know, I've already, like I said, I've already been robbed and you hear kind of footsteps approaching slowly. I don't have anything except my voice. And I prefer you don't take that. You don't some kind of sea witch, are you? You're a long way from the ocean. That wouldn't make any sense at all. Hey steps uh just continuing forward until he's close enough that you can make out he is a, a tall uh very thin dragonborn um but he has uh kind of a frilled white collared shirt uh that is covered in mud and like tattered um black like slacks kind of pulled high uh, with a cummerbund he was at some point wearing like a tuxedo apparently um and across his back is a strap, like he has a strap across his chest um, with just like a broken piece of wood that looks like it might have once been the neck of a loot. Okay. Um, I will kind of shuffle off to the side and let Olive kind of take over the communication with him since she's come out. Come, sit down. Uh, right, your voice seems to have changed a little bit in this last moment. Were, is it just you? No, there's, there's several of us here. Right, that's menacing said, enough. Safety but in numbers. If... Indeed, indeed. Um, and Vaughn is going to go over and start to try and kind of rebuild the fire so that hey. this dude can see. <laughs> My name's Edmund. Pleasure to meet you. He's And he's looking around nervously. He knows that there's somebody around that he cannot see. <laughs> and he's just kind of like fidgeting nervously. I I was serious. I've got nothing left to take. Um, if your friend is about to shoot me in the back. Don't worry. I've... You'll be fine. Sit down. And I'm She's just going to... Being very, be... very calm. Very, very, like, just do what I say. Using that uh, princess expects things to be done voice. <laughs> he does. He a little confused, but he sits. Um, just, oh, I can help with that and he uh, reaches up to like grab his loot and he goes right no I can't hmm I'm all out of sort I don't suppose you've got uh, any food you could spare of course hmm. and I'm gonna pull out a little bit of like rations and give them to him yeah, you said like... you had a story I'd love to hear it Oh, a, a song. I'm, I'd be happy to sing for you. Um, I do. I can tell tales and stories if you wish. I have news from my travels and my adventures. Uh, the the biggest story is there's a group of bandits about six miles up the road that uh, are very demanding with their tall expectations. I thought a heavy coin like... purse would be. Uh, they look like ruffians, brigands, tough. 
tough louts. How were, were they dressed? Uh, leather armor, um, some of it black painted, the, lots of leaves, very dirty, dirty folks, uh, men with rough beards. You said about six miles up the way? About six miles up the road, yeah. Um, I'm assuming they, they went in the opposite direction of you. Uh, between here and Lakeside, actually. That's, uh, they've got a bit of a toll booth set up that uh, you'd imagine with the taxes that uh, our fair leaders we, you know, raise against us, that the military would do something. But no, no. Those are domestic issues for local governments whose militaries have all been taken. I guess the burden is ours to bear <laughs> and just to be a little bit more wary on the road. The militaries have all been taken. What have they been taken for? They've been conscripting every able-bodied man that they can. That's a, Unless those of us have provide a very specific talent to the populace to keep them happy, keep them... Drunk. Drunk. And... You know, us minstrels have a way of avoiding taxes and avoiding conscription. But... It's been... It's been an odd few months, to say the least. Um, in the background, I've rolled a uh, 25 for perception to see if there are any other people nearby. Uh, yeah, that's uh, he it seems to be traveling alone. That's uh, nobody else is in the area. Okay, then I will come up slowly to the fire. Okay, and as you kind of fade into existence, come in with light. Oh, I am. Imagine you're the one that I was speaking to earlier. Uh, Edmund. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Talon. Uh, sorry. You must understand our precautions. Oh, of course. That's it. I say they're not but six miles away. There's a company of brigands. I can't blame you. Just on edge is all. But, uh, how rude. What are your names? What are your stories? Well, I'm Talon. I'm Olive. Olive and Talon? Interesting. Interesting. And Olive, forgive me for saying so, but you bear a certain resemblance to someone of import. I get that a lot. It's a compliment that uh, I'm not sure if I should love or not at this current moment in our history. I would say based on that response, that I understand you need to travel in secret. It's just odd you travel in travel in such secrecy between such public events. I mean, as you've stated, the roads are not safe. The military's gone. It's safer to travel off the road. Right, but of all people... I must be mistaken. I'm very sorry. As you said, you, this, the resemblance is just striking. It is. And I would imagine that um, this person of great import may not prefer to be recognized outside of their specific locations for whatever needs right understood he kind of taps the side of his uh snout i don't know the what the front of a like a dragonborn's face would be his nose his muzzle work. yeah his muzzle his, muzzle yeah his muzzle <laughs> well i did promise to, to sing for my supper. Um, I'll avoid given your need for secrecy, the uh, usual accompanying dazzlement and magic. Uh, <clears throat> and he just kind of begins to softly sing. Uh, 
pretty well. Uh, that's a 21 on his performance. Um, as so as he starts singing, he just hears from like out of the dark, like, oh, shit, dude. And then starts like, drums start going off. <laughs> Give me a performance check as well. Natural 20. Natural 20. That's uh, uh, he started, and he's singing very well. Um, and your rhythm g- knocks him off a little bit, but you're perfectly on beat. You pick it. He's uh, singing just like an old sailing song, just you picking up uh, like a traveler's shanty. Um, you very clearly like retooled uh, a sailor's song to be people in the forest rather than men at sea. Um, he goes, but after a, a couple verses of this song, he actually kind of stops and is just listening to you drum. And the two of you are like, Tez is blasting out just like, Why? Uh, or sorry, Guy is just blasting out just like incredible technical performance here that uh, his usual attitude would not belie. Uh, the point that Edmund has like stopped singing and is just like listening until Guy finally you, you know, realize that it's just you and you kind of fall out of the zone and all kind of falls quiet. Edmund, soft applause. I did not realize that uh, you were already in companionship with a, a fellow minstrel. I would not have dared oppose and thought to offer my inferior uh, music to something to eat. So please, I'm, there must. I'm, 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 I'm a dude. I'm not. I'm not a lady. <laughs> I, of course. Well, dude. Incredible, incredible performance. Um, Thanks, dude. But there must be something else I can do to repay the kindness you've shown me by providing me food, and I hope allowing me to shelter with you for the evening. I don't have to go inside your your dome. I can sleep out here, simply knowing that um, such figures as yourselves are nearby it offers great comfort. But please, if I can offer information or news of what's going on. Anything that you can share. Yes. Better to be informed than not. Ah, and then your current level, what should I assume you already know of the, the goings on in the region? Should I provide broad strokes and highlights? Would you like more in-depth details? Would you like me to start with broad strokes? And if you're curious about anything in particular, we can dive in further and I'll tell you what I know. Let's start with broad strokes and we'll dive. Okay. Well, I didn't want you to have to rehash the whole history of the world. Uh, I just, I see it just <laughs> a thumb. <laughs> it's Will in the background. I will. You play Will. <laughs> um, broad strokes. Um, tensions between. Uh, Ostromir and the Felden Waith are high. Apparently a number of assassinations have taken place and each blames the other. Um, Lion's Fall is still doing the usual thing of you know, pitting them against each other and not joining. Um, but that's all old news. That's all usual. Um, the Lost Princess I'm assuming you already know, has returned and has been traveling from city to city, letting everyone know that all is well and that she fully intends to take the throne from her father once the time is right. That the barbarian tribes to the north, they've recently begun assembling for their their yearly gathering the commune, whatever they call in the young that care. Um, a number of attacks have taken place across, I mean, across the entire continent. That's uh, numerous high ranking individuals, of different governments and political parties have been either killed or disappeared. Tell me more about that. 
I, it's un it's unknown whether they're related, but um, across what is what's the rumors? That's what I want to know. What people are <sighs> thinking, what they believe. Rumors are wide. Truth. Rumors are widespread. There's always the you know, the man behind the curtain pulling the strings. That's always a, a crowd favorite. That some powerful individual is pushing and pulling global events to his liking. A few obvious ones uh, across Nalbrand. Any discontenters with the way things currently are, they're quickly silenced, quickly taken into custody for some crime or another. It's convenient that everyone that's discontent with the, the status quo is also guilty of high, some high crime or another. Um, to the south, rumors of a dangerous cult singing, seeking to resurrect an ancient entity. Nonsense, it's just warlords and brigands across the Felden Waith, of course, that are just grabbing for power. What's the name oh. of the cult, do you know? Oh, I don't Seems believe that actually... Story. I don't believe that actually is a cult, just everybody speaks of dark cloaked figures wrapped in chains and covered in blood before they, the fighting even starts. Such a Mo beautiful imagery, isn't it? I mean, I may have flowered it up Creative. a little bit, but I'm nothing if not a storyteller. But I personally think that any one tale which got, takes root, you always have impersonators seeking to grab onto the legacy of something else. You'll see. Uh, it was a large prison break in the Blackwater prison of Gormund. Um, when did that happen? That was some um, week and a half ago. Uh, the city itself is keeping things on, keeping things quiet. That's, uh, they maintain their independence based on the security of that particular prison. And it's where all the worst of the worst go. I actually just spoke with a gentleman on the road uh, just this morning who looked like he'd been through a ringer, but he said that was the direction he was going. Gourmand. Odd fellow. Felt like he had an echo to everything he said. Hmm. But Interesting. That was just a few hours ago, just before I was robbed. I hope he's all right. Nice guy. He's headed in the direction of Gourmand or away from in the direction of. Um, he didn't say why. He just asked for directions. But You've mentioned a lot of areas. Any news out west? Wallenstead? Oh, uh, not other than the conscripted men being gathered to form the army. It's... But what else is new? It's... Elbrand always is seeking to form an army and go strike out in righteous conquest. Of something or other. My guess is there's a opportunity with the gathering at the Angthakker that they seek to take out the barbarian nobads once and for all. But it could be something worse. It's with tensions high between Ostermere and the Felden Waith. They might finally make that big push south that the old Valkyrie pushed for for so long. So I don't have much more I can tell you. That's if there's anything specific you'd want to know. Those are the current, current happenings. What leads you to believe that a uh, Lion's Fall is pushing the two to fight? They've always done that. That's the city states: Gormund, Lion's Fall. Uh, I have more of them. One sec. Tronkel. That's they all have something that just sets them apart. Lion's Fall has always been in that. They're balanced in the power struggle between Ostermere and the Feldenweith. They've always courted both and used the threat of one to stop the other from just invading and taking them over. It's an impressive strategy for someone who's not so 
militaristically inclined, the fact that they've been able to hold off for so long is impressive. Last I heard, they had been sending ambassadors out to, to both to finally push for a truce to fully re resist the press of Nalbarund. No one of them could stand strong against the Empire for long, but all of them together, that would break the stalemate. I mean, if you ask me, that sounds like peace. Doesn't sound like they're trying to cause a war. Oh, no, lions fall, no. But any disruption to what they've been doing, if one, say, if Ostromir felt that the Feldenwaith was taking out dignitaries and weakening Lion's Fall for an invasion, they would marshal as well. It's an important piece of tactical land. They control the pass. They control the mountains. They control the forest. And they do it all through a fine knife's edge balancing act between the two empires on either side of them. How do you feel about the Nalbarund Empire? Not to get into politics with strangers, but it's always interesting to hear how that opinion flavors people's opinions. Well, a minstrel's job is to be able to eat any meal regardless of flavor. He kind of holds up like the hardtack ration. Delicious. Takes a bite. So, how do you feel about the Nalbarundian Empire? I feel that it has a rich history of success. I agree with you. And depending on how it moves in the future, could also have a rich future. I'm inclined to agree. My current belief, and you will have to correct me if my assumption is incorrect, is that the princess that's been going from town to town, stirring up the people to the righteous cause, is not actually the princess. What I've seen no. of her in the past, this current stirring up the people to go to war for something other than themselves, doesn't match the rhetoric I've heard in the past. And he looks very closely at you. What has My she been speaking of specifically? That the right that each citizen has is that to the glory of the, the empire and the good citizens that do as they're told and stay in line. And I am paraphrasing here. It's a long flowery speech. They are the ones that will be rewarded either in this life or the next. The lady the people have come to know and love over the last few decades is not one that spouts empty promises about dying for your country, for glory in your next life. The princess I would follow is the one that spoke of kindness to the neighbors, satisfaction with what we have accomplished and the need to to settle, till the soil that we've taken and build. It's not very Nalburundian, you know, is it though? Who says I'm very Nalburundian? I travel these lands, I speak to the people, and when given the opportunity, I speak for them. But a oh, wandering bard with a broken enough. lute cannot speak so highly. We need someone with strength and power of arm and word to fight for us. And if that person were to step forward and do so, many would follow. I couldn't agree more. Gonna stay silent. And stare I believe, at 
The flames. <laughs> Edmund kind of sits back as well, kind of nodding to himself, and he, he pulls off, and there's a little bit of the loot, and he uh, pulls the loot, and he pulls a knife out of his boot, and he begins, like, shaving off splinters, um, and slowly just kind of working to start getting it to a point that he can repair his instrument. If there's nothing else that needs to be said, you each go through. There's no other incident through the night. Um, Edmund actually offers to take one of your watches for you. Um, whoever that might be. Um, I don't know if I trust him that much, but... He offers, uh, and he'll at the very least stay up with one of you. Probably uh, Tez, just to talk about musical theater. Yeah, I guy i'm so sorry guy. i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it episode two it's fine um yeah he, he stays up to like chat with you about musical theory and i imagine the conversation uh, does not go the way he would intend no <laughs> at all no no not at all um in the morning uh as you're breaking down camp, he... I think I know the next story I'm going to tell on my travels. But is there any message you would like me to give in particular to the next town? There's somebody out there watching the world for them. He gives a very belied by his torn and dirty clothing, a very formal bow. Uh, he does wait specifically until like Guy and Talon aren't watching. Um, uh, she's going to, before he, he leaves, actually give him a small package of like some rations and, you know, a few things that they have, a couple pieces of gold. Kindness will not be forgotten, my lady. Watch out for bandits. And he straightens up. Wish me luck. He watches his Good luck. He just his back kind of fades into the forest in the distance as he's walking away from your camp. Is it? Poor guy. Violent sneezing. He's clear in the other room. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Talon, I'll take another survival check for this day of travel. Wow, I'm these survival checks are going great. Uh 24. 24. Okay. Um, with that, and with the advanced knowledge of the, the bandits, uh, you kind of see their camp. It is between the river where you're going and the road, which at this point is probably its tightest. The closest they get at about 150 yards. Um, you So you make out their camp. You see a small, unhidden plume of smoke from their morning campfire. Um, do you seek to go around? Or how do you, how do you want to do There is, sorry, there is the bandits? Yeah, that's okay. a, you see, you know the camp and it's coming up at about the point that Edmund warned you they warned you they'd be. I mean, we could, we could take them out. I don't, I don't know, maybe. Stop them from taking money from other people. Turn to Talon and say, I, I think that's a very good idea. I think our friend that we met may hear that story. And that would do wonders for what we're trying to do. You've got it. Oh, my camera just went out. One sec. Sorry. Bye, DM. <laughs> <laughs> we're on our own now. <laughs> uh, just Hi. make it up as you go. I trust you. 
right. <laughs> There's a couple things that I don't like, and that's uh, this dude's, you know, taking advantage of other people, man. That's that's not cool. I agree. And there's plenty, plenty that these people have contributed to, to have a fair and safe existence. They don't need to be afraid of traveling the roads. Do you have anything to fight with? I mean, I open up the bag. Yeah, I got a few things. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to hand him one of my torches. If I see and a dragon's tooth. You can use Ooh. this as a dagger. That's pretty sick. This, I probably shouldn't do that again. This might be better than a torch, and I'll just grab my quarter staff. Okay. Oh, yeah, good, I mean, I got this, and I reach in and I pull out like a broken short sword. And that that should work, right? Whatever. It's all good. I, I don't want to. Oh, I'm comfortable with anything, dude. So I mean, just, don't worry just about it. Them for now, if you need them, use them. Yeah, all right. Cool. Toss the. I can toss the quarter staff into the into the bag. Okay. How are you approaching? Can we see how many individuals are around this camp? Not from the distance you're at. You will have to get closer. Is... Talon, will you, will you scout and see? Yep, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> give me a, give me a stealth check. Uh, and as he says, uh, as he says, that's what I'm here for. She's gonna say, more than just that, and then squeeze his hand. Oh. Uh, twenty six. 26 yeah they've got it. no you get up to their like you are pretty much standing in their camp like doing a head count as they're milling about some of them are still sleeping there are eight kind of a mixed variety of races uh banditry is equal opportunity um can i see who appears to be clearly the leader uh yeah there is one large uh, sorry, large is relative. A very heavy set halfling who's sitting, he's got a um, like a crystalline skull that it seems to be full of either wine or beer or something uh, that he's like sitting there drinking out of and he keeps barking out like pointless orders. It's very, it's classic. Uh, underqualified manager that makes yeah. up for it by ta over talking and like just kind of being a dick with commanding people to do stuff. So he's just micromanaging the hell out of everybody while sitting there and drinking at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, but he's clearly in charge. Okay. If you're going to break down the tent, you might as well do it the right way. That's put your, use your lift with your back. Your back, I see, not your legs. You need them for running later if we've got to run down somebody. All right, so you said eight total? Eight total, including the the halfling. Okay. I'll uh, sneak back to the group, and uh, there's eight of them. They don't look very well organized. And uh, leader's the short, fat one. Right. I can take the first shot. I'm not worried about the uh, number disadvantage at all. I mean, I think that'll be all right. Well, let's talk about what we think we can do to to close them in. I mean, would it be better if we can get them closer together? Does anybody have anything that they can set off in a group? Yeah, I could bring them together. But do we have anything that would area of effect? Yeah. I'm sorry. Would you ask? Guy, you saying that, I the thing that popped into my head was just you going, music brings everyone together, man. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, that's right. 100% my plan. 100%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Walk in there, 
like some light drum beats like sub guys 100 percent. if that's if if that's the way it goes that's what i'm doing 100 percent um i mean oh, I we can... also got a long rest right since yeah. our last yeah, yeah, battle yeah, you... so i'm gonna make sure that that's okay on my thing sorry yeah no you're good i mean i can do the same thing i did back at the prison but it's a one-time thing The same thing you did back at the prison. The lightning. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, I can. Yeah, I, I'm pretty confident uh, I could get them all in a tight group. And then I, I think I could start it off. Maybe if you wanted, because I mean, you got a bow, like maybe you shoot them from back there. And I just, I, you, I, can, I, you get them in a tight group. You lightning them and all entangle them so that they can't move. Or well, they can't move very fast, at least. Well, like, I was thinking, like, I mean, if it's a one-time thing, I wouldn't want you to waste it on these guys. These guys, are, we're just, whoa, I ain't worried about them. I mean, it's a one-time, it just takes a lot of energy in a day, correct? Yeah, I mean, I just won't be able to do it the rest of the day. I mean, that's up to you, dude. Find something else we would need it for. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll watch for your signal, guy. Guy, what? What are you? Right. How are you going to get them together? Ah, oh, dude, music brings everyone together. <laughs> Such a good laugh. I'm sorry, I ruined that for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, all, all right. Don't worry about it. I got this. We're good. So. He'll uh, look back, make sure you guys are ready, and then he's going to start. He's going to walk out a little bit and then start walking in. Before we go into it, I'm going to cast my um, uh, the, the, what is it called? The sword thing. Spiritual weapon? Spiritual weapon. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to cast my spiritual weapon so that it's ready um, and then prepare and tangle. Okay. So, Guy, you know where their camp is, uh, and you're just walking right into it? Yep. Okay. So I got my drum out, and I'm doing just like a little beat as I'm walking. Just nothing nothing too intricate, but uh, that is a 15 on performance. That was actually kind of a shitty roll, but... Yeah, that's a... Uh got the drum going so they're aware you're there as you like walk up and well, look at this boss fresh meat delivered straight to our camp oh not what's even, up dude not even the first bar that we've drawn a stick today oh. oh that was yesterday still scratching his chest leaning back well since you're here Feel free to play us a song. Drop on your gold. And some of the yeah, sure. I, I, don't, start I don't have, I don't have any gold, but I'll just play some music for you. Come here, guys. Hear this out. You're gonna want to listen to this. And I, uh, I start playing another tune. I don't know if you want me to make another performance check or not. Uh, yeah, give me another performance check. Okay. Uh, this one is much higher. Uh, that is a, a twenty-five. Twenty-five. That's they're they're letting you play um and you get right up like into the center of their camp they are pulling out their swords and like kind of encircling you uh and then all eight of them. he stops and starts doing like the down with the sickness drums <laughs> and then he just goes and rages and uh I, yeah i'm gonna rage okay uh let's get your rage and let's get initiative checks Okay. Oh. Can that be like, like our me? reaction? Uh, yeah, that'll be the signal. So you'll you'll each get to do something before this because they okay. are surprised. Um, with that twenty five per, uh, perception or performance that lulled them into a sense of it's all like all good. Uh, 
Did any of you roll below a five for your initiative? I've got a no. nine. No. You got a nine? I did, not for eight guys, I did not roll above a five on initiative. Jesus. So okay. it goes, you guys, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. All right, I got a 12. So 12. do we just want to go in an in initiative of our, for our pre-actions uh, as well, or? Yeah, so David, what is your, what are your d dexterity scores for Guy and Vala? Uh, mine's shit, so it's probably Vala. Mine's a one. Yeah, mine's less. Plus one. Okay, so it goes Vala, Guy, uh, sorry, Olive, Guy, <laughs> Talon. Uh, really names. quick, do I do I get a roll on that table? Like, because I yeah, because you I, do because going into a rage. That's the first the first thing that happens. All right, dude. I think it's one of the regular ones. Oh, it's one of the ones we changed. Sweet. Uh, oh, my God. That's going to be so happens. great. Okay, so as he starts beating, like, you just see darkness start to seep out from his edges as he, like, just, oh, man. This, I, I, can't, I can't. And then a cloud of shadow just burst forth from, like, kind wings. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Uh and so wrap around my you form cloak. yeah my form becomes all shadowy and uh i get advantage on stealth checks eh. uh but i gain another ability okay that's so you guys hear this the doo -doo -doo -doo, and then just like this explosion of shadow that condenses down back into the vague shape of guy um that is your bonus action. What else are you doing? Uh, how how close are they all? Uh, we'll say they're in like a ten foot radius circle around you. So they're all, all of them are ten feet from you at different points. Okay, perfect. I am going to uh, trying to get the leader. Um. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am going to, while still beating the drum, I'm going to take the quarter staff and just whap right up to the side of the leader's head. Okay, you do like the the drummer thing. That's uh, where you don't have drum sticks, I guess, but you just in between the beats, grab the quarter staff and just crack it down. Give me an attack roll uh, with advantage because he is surprised. All right. Uh, that is with a quarter staff. Ooh, I actually get a plus eight. Um, and I would assume that's one handed because I'm still beating on the drum. So we'll, yeah. we'll do that. Uh, okay. So that is a, uh, uh, 17 hit. 17 hits. Okay. And I get an additional plus two because I'm raging. Um, well, that's ass. Uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage and as it cracks off of him i'm gonna come back with a uh backhand kind of like a backswing on it okay and same That's, thing he be he becomes your bass drum on this just bam bam yeah he, he like on on beat with his uh, uh, like <laughs> <smacking him. laughs> Oh, it's you hitting him in the throat with the quarter staff. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that one's significantly higher. Yeah, um, it hits. <laughs> and whoop, that is a 10. 10 points of bludgeoning damage. 10 points damage. of damage. That's hit him twice in the throat. His hands go up and his eyes kind of bulge out. Uh, he's still standing, uh, but that hurts a lot. We got Vala. <laughs> Vala's going to smile at how phenomenal this situation is. Um, and she's going to send out the dark, dirt-covered roots of the trees around to wrap around the bottoms of these guys' legs. Um, and they... Uh, it makes the whole area difficult terrain, terrain for them um 
and they must succeed a strength saving throw or be restricted by the entangling plants until the spell ends at last for a whole minute and the strength is 18. 18, okay. That is a 14. 8. 16. 1. 11. 3. 9. 12. And 15. I think I rolled an extra couple, like an extra time or two there, uh, <laughs> but, but none, none of them, none, none of, them of them make it. So they are all restrained. Guy, I need your um, strength saving throw. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I oh yeah, it's a square of twenty feet, so he would be in. Uh, what was the DC? Eighteen. I rolled an eighteen on the dot. Okay, Perfect. that's a almost like there's this little clearing just. You manage to shape your spell almost. That's it'll still be difficult terrain, but guy, I don't think you have to worry about that really. <laughs> nah. And then um as my bonus action, the um my spiritual weapon is gonna slice through the air horizontally and try and just swing at the first individual that it uh okay. comes across. Roll the hit. This is gonna be opposite the leader. Uh, one of the bandits who was coming in with like a truncheon okay. behind Guy as he was drumming. So that is a 22 to hit. 22, go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> uh, that is 13 damage. That, 13 that points is of damage. Almost max on that weapon so you cast entangle it circles up it grabs these people the one guy who has his back to you like he's like trying to lift his feet and pulls feet out the sword comes into shape like spins in front of you before stopping and just holding perfectly still you like push on it and it rockets forward it's not spinning or anything it is just a straight line and it hits him in the back and he looks at it as it comes to a stop right in front of him. And he slides backwards, his legs being held up by the vines as the t upper part of his torso and body like sloughs off to the back. Uh, he's dead. Um, anything else you're doing? That is the end of my turn. Okay, Raven. Sorry, Talon. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my high bolt bow with uh, casting chain lightning. Okay. So I I'm not sure on this since it's a spell. Do I need to roll? Because they have to save against it. So do I have to uh, roll a hit first of all? Uh, it's no, it's just a saving throw. What is the DC on this? It's dexterity, dex, right? Dex sixteen. And you'll just Ooh, and sorry, one sec. Because when you're restrained. You guys just figured out like a crazy ass combo move. <laughs> <laughs> if you tie them all up and hit them with lightning. Oh shit. Okay, cool. That disadvantage is awesome. Having throws. Okay, so you only have to roll and, it for four people because I can do it to my target plus three others. So. Okay, that is a nine on the first one. It's a 15 on the second. 14 on the third. And a two. On the fourth. Okay. I'm just going to roll in D&D &D Beyond. D &D. 34 points of lightning damage. 34 wow. points of lightning damage. To That's... all of them. <laughs> all four yeah. of them. Yeah. Right. So right as this dude gets cut in half and falls off, a bolt of lightning strikes the guy next to him, arcing around the left. Uh, and it, it kills all th all four of the guys it hits. That's uh, leads up and it ends right next to the bandit leader. Um, but they get just, you know, what happens when a frog gets hit by lightning? The same thing as everything else, uh, <laughs> as they crumple into like flaming, crispy, uh, used to be dudes and dudettes, um, hitting the ground, uh, which takes us to the top of initiative. Surprise round is over. Or is there anything else you're doing? Uh, then I would just hide for my bonus action 
Yeah, give me his stealth check. Okay. 19 plus just... 11, so 30. Yeah, you're fucking gone. That's... Poor dudes. <laughs> uh, they are all no longer surprised. The uh, three of them that are remaining. No, two of them that are remaining. Uh, and we come back to the top with uh, Paula. <laughs> Paul is going to uh, step forward towards the clearing and say, stand down. Um, do I, like, if I wait for their response, do I lose my action? Or I will, can I... you know, you got, you're got fucking annihilating these guys. I'm going to let you hold on to your action. Uh, it will move you to the bottom of the initiative, which is where you are at the top. So you will just go twice in a row, pretty much. Okay. Because it would just be for this round. Um, I mean, it would, but it would be at the bottom of like our three people initiative and their initiative. And then, okay, okay, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, you'll just move to the bottom of this round, and then you'll be okay. back at the top for the next one. Um, which moves us to guy. So, are is there any shadows around? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're in a forest, so there's trees and stuff all over the place. Yeah. Uh, so, as I'm in front of the leader. I'm looking at him and say, uh, I kind of intimidate him. You will never set up a toll road again. And then I teleport behind him. Okay. And I would like to hold my beat the shit out of you stick until he decides what he's going to do. Uh, can I roll intimidation by chance? Yeah, uh, yeah, you absolutely can. Okay. That's a lot. Uh, Because, you know, you know how many times you get a roll intimidation, right? Uh, that's a 26. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, he seems pretty scared. Talon? <laughs> I'm going to hold my action of shooting my bow. Uh, and I will set it free if the leader has any, any indication that he is not stepping down. Okay. The not the leader. There's just a, a human, uh, female, human woman, uh, and she just throws her short sword on the ground and just like lifts her hands up and like kind of starts to try to drop to her knees, but she's partially being held up by the vines and just so is trying not to move <laughs> or look at any of you. Uh, the leader. He's going to make. A wisdom check. That is a two, <laughs> which means he's going to make the least wise decision. And what are you doing? Kill him! And he uh, turns to like throw his sword because he doesn't know that guy teleported behind him. He can just you're hidden, so he just leans back to throw his sword at Vala. Uh, those of you with held actions. 18 to hit. Uh, 18, 18 hits. 18 to hit. 18 <laughs> hits. Uh, uh, David, what is your AC actually? 17. 17. Okay. 8 plus 14 plus 7 is 21 points of damage. 21 did, points of damage. did another 10. The 10 points. Uh, so, Guy, you clock him in the back of the head, and you just hear a crunch, and he tilts forward, still just being held up by the vines. Uh, he's out. Uh, the arrow that was going towards him arcs up directly towards your orange headband. Uh, and how much damage was that, Mike? Oh, Jesus. Uh, let me recalculate that. <laughs> All right. 21 I thought, points I thought of you damage. 21. Yeah, 21. 21. Uh, and it's uh, piercing, so it's halved because you're raging. Okay. Uh, so you take 11 points of damage as the arrow curves upwards and sticks square in your forehead where the headband is. Ow, dude. Just... I'm a unicorn now. <laughs> it's it's wedged in the bone a little bit. Ow. It's also a thick padded headband, so it's stuck in pulling the arrow out. The headband like knits itself back together. 
Raven's and just found gonna, out what the headband does. Yeah, Talon's going to be like, <laughs> what the hell? And just look at his hands and the bow and try to figure out what the hell just happened because he doesn't miss. <laughs> you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the We're out of, out of initiative. The last living bandit goes, oh, God, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. And then uh, Val is going to say, weapons down. It's already on the ground. It's already on the ground. I threw it on the ground. <laughs> she, oh, I, she meant it for Raven and Guy or Talon and Guy, <laughs> but she's going to walk up, grab him by the chin in that like power stance, lift his chin up to look at her. Do you know what you've been doing? I, we've been collecting... We haven't been like collecting tolls. She's like trying, kind of like trying not to meet your eye, um, but she's she's terrified. I'm so sorry. I'll turn myself in. Please don't kill me. You will look at me. She looks at you. Do yes, you I'm... know what you've been doing is wrong? Yes, I do. It's... Do you know what you're going to do with your life from now on? No, whatever you say. You are going to find something meaningful to do. Or I will find you. And I will end you. And then I'm going to cast a Primal Savagery to increase my intimidation. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll ha it'll look like like spider fangs are coming out of my cheekbones, and then they're just like dripping with poison. Okay, give me an intimidation check with advantage. I don't okay. like that, dude. Oh, what the fuck, dude? I roll my. Oh, that is not nat twenty. She actually just kind of begins to cry. And she's like, oh, like, heal horses and sick children. I promise, just please don't kill me. I'll do whatever it takes. The vines creeping up her legs further, <laughs> just accentuating everything that's happening. We're going to let you go. But from here on out, you have to make better choices. Ones that support the people around you. Ones that create a better world. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I will. I. It's no excuse, but I just... After leaving the army, I didn't have anywhere to go. They killed deserters, and... I, this seemed like the best, and I hated every minute of it, but I'll do better. I'll go wherever I can to where I can do good. I'll... I'll do better, I promise. I'm gonna pull out of my bag two pieces of gold, which is gonna confuse the fuck out of her, but it's okay. I'm well, gonna grab think, her well, hand, mm. put them in her hand, and tell her, this is so you can start a new life. She looks like eyes kind of wide at it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I'll... And the vines disappear. And she faints. <laughs> <laughs> like just hits the ground. Fist clenched around the uh, two pieces of gold. Little fangs go back into my face. Talon's gonna run in and first go to Guy. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. That never, I've never seen my arrow hey, curve like that. Dude, the fuck? Are you all right? I don't know, I'm I'm all right. Damn, man. Is he? Oh. Is he? Actually, does he actually look hurt? Hurt, or does it look like, like the headband just took the blow? Uh, I mean, he got hurt. Uh, not bad though, but not badly. It is uh, a headband of arrow catching. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> shitty. Uh, and it's cursed. You <laughs> cannot take it off <laughs> until you have the curse removed. Um. But if you look up the magic item, uh, a shield of arrow catching, it pretty much does that. 
Okay, then I, I'm gonna come over and uh, put my hand around the base of the arrow. Did you already take it out? Yeah, yeah. I okay. pulled it out. I don't want to be a fucking unicorn. <laughs> I'm um, gonna put put my hand on your forehead and cast um, cure wounds. Uh, I will say now you can actively you like you get a plus two Ooh. bonus to armor against range attacks. Uh, that the shield would offer you. The difference is instead of being able to use your reaction to become the target of the attack is if an arrow is hitting somebody within five feet of you, you become the target. Okay. All right. Cool. And you said that is an uh, a uh, uh, shield of uh, obviously it's a headband, but yeah, it's it's the headband. So you do get the plus two to your armor class against range attacks. And now that you know that's what it is, you can actively kind of use it to shield of missile attraction. Arrow catching shield. Arrow catching shield. Arrow catching shield. Okay. You also get 22 points that you heal. Perfect. Thank you. Arrow catching shield. That is not a shield, but I'm going to put it on anyway. Yeah, it'll pretty much give you everything. Just know that your armor class is normally too lower than that. Okay. I'm just going to equip it and attune to it. So that way I, I should remember, but actually I think the shield of missile attraction is yeah, the shield of missile attraction is better for that. So you'll get the, the plus two. Okay. I but, will remove this one. Yeah. Well, let's see how you want to do this. We'll we'll talk about this later. It's a shield okay. of missile attraction, that out. but it's a headband. We'll figure out the exact details. Yeah. Um, after seeing that he's okay, I'm going to start going through the camp and seeing if I can find money of any variety. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't know going through. It's pretty quick to find the thing that the halfling leader was sitting on was actually a chest. Um, you have his crystalline skull goblet, um, which is just exactly that. It's a crystal. It's a crystal skull goblet um the chest has uh 200 silver pieces uh and 142 copper pieces okay they haven't gotten much you know larger bills off people that they've been robbing on the road but in terms of magical item and equipment, uh, David, you can add uh, a bunch of mundane short swords and stuff to your uh, tra trash bag of holding. Perfect. Um, eight of them. How many would you say? Okay, I was going to say how yeah, many. Would you they they all have equipment? short swords and or truncheons. So. Okay. Which would be just a club would be the rules for that. So you can say like four and. Or we'll say like six short swords and two clubs. Yeah. They didn't get a chance to use them, so. And then as I'm collecting the gold or the money, uh, I'm just going to look at everybody and be like, this goes to the orphanage in the next town. There's no way for us to find who this belongs to. I'd agree with that. Orphanage or whatever. All right, whatever... Um, we can find that whoever needs benefits it. this area. Okay. Are you guys wanting to do anything else, or just continue on? I'm gonna take the the girl and put her in the tent, so that she's not out in the open. Very nice. Very kind. She, uh... Kind and also mean, like a good parent. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> kind of get her situated, get her tucked into a bedroll. She's kind of softly whimpering in her sleep. She's still terrified, but her fist has not come unclenched from the two gold pieces. I'll also leave a note that says do better so she doesn't think it was a dream. All the dead people outside of the tent <laughs> will we'll probably clue Very her in. <laughs> Man, what a neat, weird dream. And all my friends are dead. 
Uh, okay. And you go on your merry way. Um, the rest of the day comes without incident. Uh, look out your watches in a sec. I'm assuming the same order um, as night settles in. Is there anything else you guys are wanting to talk about or do? Or are we just skipping through? Uh, just at some point, I'll just look the guy right after the battle or after the fight and just cool shadows. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess I probably should have told you guys when I get mad, some like weird shit happens. Um, so yeah, just kind of play it as you see it, I guess. Don't piss you off. Got it. We've dealt with that. Oh, before. yeah. I mean, kind of. Sometimes it's not just me that it affects. What else can happen? Well, uh, I mean, a lot of different things, to be honest with you. You, you are welcome to give them uh, this one time story if you've got one. So like, there's this one time, right? We're in this bar and this dude came up and he thought I was hitting on his woman. And I was like, dude, I'm not, I'm just talking, bro. Like chill. And obviously when you tell somebody to chill, it just makes them much more chill. Well, then he threw his drink on me. And to be honest, I didn't really react to that real well. And there was, you know, clouds that started to come about and some lightning that came down. Uh, then kind of barbecued him. Yeah. It's good to know. And you have no control over it? Not really, no, unless I don't get mad. Hmm. That's very good to know. Usually. Look, I'm not gonna fault you for killing somebody when you're angry. We'll, I wasn't we'll learn. Dead. He just. He... Oh. I mean, I, 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 I did what I could to, you know, when it hit, and I was like, oh shit, dude. I'd like, you know, my bad, bro, but. Uh, it, you know, he he didn't die. Long. G- got it. Um. Yeah, sorry I asked. Um, let's let's just forget, forget I asked. Let's just keep going. Yeah. All right, dude. Cool. Uh, I had to change the the music. I did appreciate that as you were telling your your angry bar fight story like a metal guitar solo <laughs> started playing in the background he burnt to a crisp <laughs> it's the most metal thing i've ever fucking heard <laughs> okay. especially uh, with our down with the sickness drums earlier like yeah pretty sweet. um and then I'll, only other thing for me is that night when we were doing the shift change um from talon and olive i'll just kind of talk to her for a sec before going to bed just oh, well. so that's two people in the last couple days that have recognized you I have to do something else I mean dyeing my hair is not enough I just I don't know what else we can do I'm not we're not ready for me to come out yet. There needs to be more upheaval between the upper houses before before we start putting that in place. And somebody sneaking around looking like you's not making our job any easier. I mean, I'm okay with the rumors, but I can't be recognized in cities. <laughs> I don't know, we gotta find something. Let's make it a priority after we find Retalia and Tez. Alright. 
sleeper. I'm gonna kiss him on the cheek. That's it, and this is not me just being cheesy because it was a moment. I actually, I rolled a natural 20 for an event. I rolled a 100 uh, as you like kiss him on the cheek, a shooting star overhead. Oh. All right, then that's too it. cute. <laughs> Do either of you make a wish? Yes, always. I'm not going to say what it is, though, because then it won't come true. Okay. I will need you to message me what it is. Uh, okay. That's fair. That's probably a good indicator. I'd probably do that too. Yeah. <laughs> so what'd you wish for? I can't tell you. <laughs> All right. I'll go Guy, there. we'll say you see it too. You're on your back. Settling. Oh, down. shit, dude. That's kind of cool. Okay, but nothing else happens that night throughout the rest of the watches. You wake up in the next morning, continue on your path, and it's as you enter, or you kind of exit the, the river plain, a massive lake opens up in front of you. A tremendous lake, like you cannot make out the other side. It's almost as though you're standing on a shore of the ocean looking out. Except in the distance, you can see a couple mountains cresting over the horizon. The lake for which Lakeside is named lays just on the other side. Another day of travel uh, will put you next to the city. But this place is well enough traveled that you're able to kind of keep to yourselves and avoid look, but you won't run into any trouble. It is that evening as the sun begins to set. And I imagine, based on your previous discussion, hooded and cloaked, going into the city to your meeting place at the Emerald Gates Tavern. I'm just going to look to Olive real quick and just say, man, Dragonborn, a tavern. Kind of miss him, you know? <laughs> I hope they're doing all right. Me too. You enter the tavern and find uh, kind of a, a one of those corner booths that's kind of covered from most sides so that, Vala, you're able to kind of stay shadowed and hidden, knowing that you are an incredibly recognizable person to the people of Nalderund. Granted, the two people that recognize you are individuals who are in the know, about the goings on, but being wary of taking chances, settle in. Drinks are brought to your table. Imagine you get rooms because this is the place you know to meet uh, with Ritalia and Tez when they arrive. I think that is where we're going to have to call it for tonight. It's a good stopping point. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for episode two of campaign three. Um, I'm very excited. We will see you uh, Thursday for our normal games. We might do a couple su more surprise streams just if we have the time and we're able like we did yesterday. Uh, <coughs> Especially um, tomorrow's a holiday. <laughs> whoa, who knows? I we'll promise you anything. <laughs> but keep an eye on our Discord. Feel free to join that as the next day nachos. It's a... Uh, you're in the right place. We hang out in there a lot, um, but it's where our going live notifications are. Um, a tremendous thank you to some of the people that have been chatting us out this week. We've got them from County Good Mage. I've seen shout outs from Apothic Decay, from uh, Commercial. They've all given us shout outs. Um, David, I see you typing. Are you, does it, can somebody get shout outs to those three people? Uh, once we, we'll, we'll shout them out once yeah, we go to our ending it. screen. Yeah. SO? Uh, exclamation point SO. Yeah. Yeah. We'll and, get... uh, except I don't know how to spell any of those because I big dumb. Um, I'm going to just hold out because I. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I... And for anybody that missed any part of today's episode or episode one, um, all that goes live on our YouTube on Fridays, 
um, try to have them on on Friday morning so you can catch up before the next the next stream. So be sure to check those out. That's uh, do we have any other announcements? Any thank yous? Anything else that we want to go over? Thanks to Crafting uh, Bunny I... for chatting today. Oh yeah, thank yeah. you so much. And Mako That's just got right. here. So. Hey, <laughs> Mako, so what's going on? <laughs> thank you, yeah. thank you both for hanging out. We're we're so thankful for the two of you, for anybody that's hanging out and chatting and watching our streams. We love doing this. We love being here. We would be doing it anyway. We're glad we could be doing it with you. Um, um, I did finally get some packaging stuff. So those who won, uh, will be getting their there we go we'll be getting their stuff uh i'm still gonna say it soon ish um yeah we appreciate you all have a wonderful night we will see you next time on easy to spell bye bye, bye.